Well, it's absolutely fabulous to be here with you today to talk to you about a topic that is dear to my heart. And I'm hoping that in the context of this short presentation that you might have some good memories about your walk to school. I want to begin by asking, what happens on the walk to school? Now, picture it in your head. Remember that walk. Remember the road stretching out long before you, a pack that probably felt a bit too heavy. Remember the friends that accompanied you on the journey. Remember the adventures that you had with those friends. You might also remember that some of those adventures went awry. Remember that it took you 15 minutes to get to school and about an hour or so to get home? Well, I want to suggest to you that that hour you squandered on the way home from school, I would like to suggest to you today that that hour mattered. That hour mattered to your sense of community, it mattered to your health, and it also mattered to the world around you. That hour you squandered on the way home from school played a very important role in shaping your world view. And here's why. Walking is, in fact, an indicator, and walking to school is, in fact, an indicator of what it is that we value. Walking to school tells us something about our culture. Walking to school tells us something about ourselves and our community. So stick with me. What I'm going to talk to you about today is walking to school as a simple, hopeful, and powerful act. Now, I thought it would be good to begin with an exuberant child. This is, uh, this is me, in fact, this back in the 70s. And you can see here that I had a deep sense of adventure on my walk to or from school. I was thinking about the adventures to be had. I was thinking about the choices I would have to make, the risks I might take. Today we have to ask, where did this simple adventure that we offer to children, where in fact has this adventure gone? Now, you'll see here um, some stats. I'm an urban planner by training, and we like to look at the data and the evidence to understand what's going on in our communities around us. And you can see here that if you were a child in 1969, the odds are that you walked to school. If you have children today, the odds are that your children today are driven to school. In just one generation, we have completely inverted the way that we move about. We have completely inverted how we get to and from school. What does this mean and why does this matter? I would like to propose that this matters for three not so frivolous reasons. And the first reason that I'd like to propose this matters is because walking to school is in fact a rite of passage. There's a tremendous amount of literature, extensive literature, that looks at the relationship between autonomy in children and creating autonomous, high-functioning adults. Does our abandonment of the walk to school present possibly a risk for children? Does it possibly present a risk for society? Remember your walk? Remember that exuberant child I showed you a minute ago? Well, it wasn't all fun and games. The walk often felt way too long. I remember my shoes getting really soggy, or the zipper in my boot, because we had zippers in our plastic boots back then. I remember the zipper in my boot busting and water sloshing around my feet. I also remember having a brown paper bag with my sandwich in it, and a little bit of rain or a little bit of snow getting the brown paper bag wet, the bag breaking, my apples tumbling out onto the street, and having to figure out how I was going to get to school carrying my lunch in my arms because I no longer had a bag. But these were trials to overcome. 
a rite of passage assumes at a very basic level that some type of change, some fundamental challenge is emerging in a child or a person's life, that things are going to be different as a result of an experience that is taking place. A rite of passage is about beginning to understand the role that you play in your community, the role you play in your neighborhood,